have the privilege of speaking to you for a couple of minutes about the voice of God. But the voice of God is not a subject, nor is it a tool in the hand of the believer. It's a person, and for him it's deeply, very personal. So I want to shift focus a bit from, you know, your ability to hear the voice of God, or how do I hear the voice of God? And my hope is to pull back the curtain and for us to have a grand view of this beautiful, glorious, majestic God. And that you would discover him as a life-giving father who longs to fellowship and connect with you. When we do worship schools, you know, we don't start with, how do I worship? You start with the one we worship. And this would be my hope today that you would discover him and see him for who he truly is on this journey of unpacking that prophetic gift within your life. I want to start by some quotes. Uh, A.W. Tozer said a beautiful thing. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Michael Reeves said, our view of God will determine our choices. So I want to jump into a portion of scripture that's very close and dear to my heart. It's uh, the, the prayer of Jesus in John 17. What an incredible portion of scripture. I want to highlight one verse, though. It's verse 24. Jesus makes an incredible statement. And he says, the Father has loved me before the foundation of the earth. I mean, before creation, he loved me. Jesus is revealing something about God that is mind-blowing. He is revealing that God eternally has been a father who has eternally loved his son. So if you were to ask me, what was God busy doing before creation? As he was busy loving his son. That's incredible for me. Jesus tells us what the Father has been doing eternally. Loving. You see, he's an outgoing Father. He's ever giving life. So fathering is not a quality within God. Father is what he is and what he has always been. He has always been a Father that loves. I was pondering and meditating on this and I remembered the Matthew 3 where Jesus is being baptized and there has been 400 years of silence. I mean, God has not spoken for 400 years and here the son, the beloved son is getting baptized and the father peels back the, 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 the heavens and he, he, he almost like David would say, he, he steeps over the balconies of heaven and he looks at his son and after 400 years of silence, what he chose to say in that moment is incredible. He chose to say, son, I love you. And I was thinking about that. This is not the first time Jesus have heard those words. Most probably it's just been a reminder of what he has been hearing and experiencing eternally. Son, I love you. You're my beloved son. This is the father we serve. And this is what we are invited into. You see, he's not a tyrant nor an narcissistic leader. No, no, he's a father that loves, and he wants to be your father. He wants to be your father. He wants connection and intimacy, friendship and communion. I was thinking about Jeremiah 1 verse 5. Before I formed you, I knew you. Jeremiah 31, 3. I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I was even thinking about Jesus looking over Jerusalem, saying how I have longed to gather you. And I wanted to read Ephesians 1, 3 to 5 if I could and just even just, you know. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world 
that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons. Through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Oh, you need to see this today. That your father calls you beloved and beautiful. You need to see the desire and the longing within him to father you, speak to you, be with you. Even in the book of Genesis, God is revealed as a creator and a communicator. One who is ever giving life and the one who speaks. So God speaks for two main reasons. And obviously there's a lot more to say on this. But firstly, God speaks to be known. He wants to be known. He wants to be revealed. His nature, his character, his attributes. He speaks to reveal his will, to establish his kingdom and his reign. And the second reason he speaks is to establish you in beloved identity. I was thinking about uh, when my wife was pregnant with my daughter. I have three kids and, uh, oh, they, we didn't know what to expect, you know. And uh, I remember countless times and minutes and hours spent there at the time speaking to her before her birth. I love you, you know, I'm your daddy. This is your daddy's voice. We can't wait to meet you. And then she came, I remember that moment, came and, and she was this tiny little thing and she just started breathing and the little noises and the sounds and, and, I, and I, could, I could hold her against my chest and I spoke life. I spoke over her life, I love you. Oh, we want you, we love you, we want you. And my hope was that something in that little tiny girl's heart will be affirmed in love, that she would know she's loved and wanted, not, not, not because of her performance or what she do or what she won't do, or just because she's ours, you know? And that's really what's in the heart of God. Here's the danger, if you are not rooted and established in beloved identity, in the love of the Father, most probably you will end up abusing, manipulating and prostituting that prophetic gift within your life because it will become the place from which you draw worth. And that will be problematic going forward. That's probably where the prophetic can end up hurting people. So it's vital for you to be established in love, in the Father's love, in beloved identity. You see, it's essential for you to have a revelation that God is good, He is faithful, and that is true. Communication is the primary tool to initiate relationship. And it's the primary tool to uphold relationship. And so God today wants to speak to you. And it's deeply personal. He wants to establish you in love. An identity. He wants you to have a revelation on the inside of your heart that he's a good father. He's a life-giving God. Some of you listening to this, you, you are stepping into, you know, learning about the prophetic and how to hear the voice of God and, and you know, all these things. And there are some of you watching that in your heart you believe that you can't hear the voice of God, you can't hear the voice of your Father. But I want to reassure you today, if you are a born again believer, a new creation in Christ, you have the ability to hear. You have the, the invitation to encounter. And so if you have believed that lie, that I can't hear the voice of God, I want to take a couple of moments today and settle you that you might repent of that and that you might draw close to God, draw close to his heart. That you would surrender to that father, and be established in love. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray that you would come and break those lies with inside the heart of your beloved today. The lie that I can't hear the voice of God. 
he doesn't want to speak to me. I have failed him. And so there's a disconnect. Whatever that lie might be that is hindering connection, that is hindering love, I pray, Holy Spirit, you would break that lie. And the second thing I want to ask is that you would now reveal the Father, the Father heart, the heart of God that wants to give life, that wants connection. You would make him clear that we would see him as that Father. In Jesus' name I pray. I want to say welcome on this journey into the prophetic. May you discover him more and more every day. And may you walk away from the session knowing that he longs for connection with you. Amen.